Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. So hi, everybody. So today we're going to talk about robotic process automation companies and their fees. <laughs> this is a great topic, Jackie. I can't wait for it. Hey, everybody. So it's Jackie from Denmark here with Joe from Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about robotic process automation companies and the amazing fees they take for the stuff they do. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, man, it, it's, it's enlightening when you talk to people from, you know, from talking to you and talking to Tank, I've been blown away at their pricing. Um, it, it's great. Like he was saying, to start off when he was doing stuff for automation anywhere. Now he was implementing automation. He didn't work for automation anywhere. He worked for some company implementing automation anywhere often. And they would send him to a place. And when he was on site, which would be for weeks at a time, right? Weeks. He, he, their company charged $2,000 a day for him to be there to start researching, understanding what needed to get done. Not even code. Like this is just the, the beginning parts, right? Like, just imagine two weeks of that alone, you're already at a, at a, to me, a sizable budget. Yeah, I, I know from my own company who, who also implemented some of these automation uh, robots or whatever you would call those. And they sat down an entire team of people. The people were different places in the organization, but they had a role to do with robotic process automation. And it was, okay, so you're a documenter and you're an interviewer and stuff like that. And so our own company was using quite an amount of, of resources to document the processes that we wanted automated, which is fine. And then we would send that information and videos and whatever material to a separate company that would then create the automation and document the automation, not the process, but the automation. So we had documentation of the entire process, both the one that the human did and the one that the uh, computer did. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't actually know what it cost per se, but I'd say now we have filled up the first batch of computer time we have, and now we are not doing any more. Um, it's been put on hold because it the the automations seem to work from what I'm hearing from the people who have gotten them made. But if they were such a good investment, stopping in not making more is something that's hard to understand from the outside. And one of the only things I can really come up with is the pricing of one single automation. Yeah, so let's let's continue on. Not, um, this isn't specific to your company, right, or any certain platform. But I, I also know from I think you know Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and UI UI Path. path? Is that what, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they they have to me exorbitant licensing fees. So there's you know per bot often. There, there's a license fee, like let's say, or let's say it's ten thousand dollars per bot per year, and the bot can do one thing at a time, right? So they're not saying, well, if you want to do one for mm, in importing your orders from your email to your, you know, to a spreadsheet, it can do that, or it can do, you know, something else, but it can't do both at the same time, which you know, easily a, a computer can handle multiple things, right? But that would be a separate. Um, I don't know if you need a full license for it, but you need a new a bot license, you know, for, for that thing. Um, and then there's the, you not only do you need one, but you need it, you know, for your, like your dev environment, a license for your dev environment and a license for your production environment, right? Which, it, and it's just, I just want to go, are you, are you kidding me? Like, I got to pay for a license for my dev environment and a license for my actual, you know, real world environment? Like that, that just seems ludicrous. Um, like they're just really milking you, you know? Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking that stuff like that is really, really so. We had people in the organization that found the stuff to automate, people that documented what to automate, then people from another company that we were also paying to actually make the automation. 
And then we were also paying all the licenses for the, the different software that actually hold the automation and executes the automation and develop that automation piece of software. And to me, it just sounds as if it would have been cheaper to hire a single developer to just make automations in C sharp. I don't know, something, yeah. right? Well, and, and I'm sorry, maybe you said it. I, I think it definitely made me think about it because then there's also, well, where are you going to run them? And all, often they'll say, well, you need to have a dedicated computer, even though we know you you really shouldn't have to have a dedicated computer. But they'll they'll say you need to have one, a standalone computer to do one thing, and it's no one can touch it. And it's, it's just, again, you got to really have a serious process, you know, or, uh, you know, things that you're doing either volume or, you know, whatever to justify the kind of costs that, that these things are brought in for. Yeah. And, and sure enough, you can have it running 24 seven. Sure. Um, but again, that's what three humans and weekends, I don't know. It, it's still for the price model it, it really needs to opt uh, <laughs> optimize the processes a lot and these process automations don't really optimize the process because they're doing what the human does it, some of them might be able to cut off a few seconds and stuff like that yeah, sure and they don't take coffee breaks or whatever so sure enough it might cover the work of five people who knows but it's still quite a lot of money and you can't just shift them to another role and you can't say, oh, you know what? Uh, now we actually need to get these orders out before the weekend. We are going to take you two guys over here and do some of it. That's not how process automation works. It's only doing that one thing and that alone. Yeah, no, it, you know what dawned on me, and I, I haven't mentioned it in any videos or anywhere, and I don't think you and I have talked about it, maybe, I, not in my memory, is uh, it's been on my mind a lot lately is the when is the government going to step in and say, hey, those bots you're running, since they're taking people's jobs, we're going to tax each of them at a higher rate also, as if they're a, a full-time employee. You know, we want to have we want to have unemployment insurance. I'm sorry, maybe that maybe they won't go there. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. But I bet you they're going to have some sort of a bot tax they're going to create, and it's it's still just going to it's just another way to you know for the government to get its money, whatever. Um, I, I know that companies that sell software they have bot licenses. So so if you have Word. I'm just taking Word as an example, but it could be a 365 or whatever. Um, you actually need to to pay another amount if it's not a human that's using the software but a bot. Because fair enough, uh, paying for someone who can only work for five hours on it or someone who actually does work 24-7, it's fair enough to actually have different payment models. It, yeah, I don't, boy, that, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if we've talked about that. That, to me, I'd be pretty not happy. Um, no, because I get what you're saying. I understand why they're saying it. I'd also say, well, at the same time, computers aren't going to ask you for support, you know, so, so you should have a lot easier time on some other things. Um, and it'll really, really get people hooked on using your tool because it's, hey, we're writing programs to make your tool more efficient because it's not that easy to do in the first place. And so, but then you're going to charge me more, you know, because um, take, for instance, like this one client we're, we're working on, uh, they they have this older software. It's probably written in the late 80s, mid 80s. And uh, it doesn't use the Windows controls that you and I use in AutoHotKey, unfortunately. Um, they're dynamically changing every time. So it was a bit more complex to, to automate. But um, we're ballpark-wise, let's say we did the project for about $10,000, which isn't, I mean, it, it's to me it even sounds like a lot, but it, it's not a terrible price. But the guy said because of inflation, um, costs were, you know, every week they couldn't get everything updated. They were losing $170,000 a week because they couldn't update their prices fast enough. And so we're writing a tool, you know, that'll help them make the changes very quickly and more consistently and reliably and crank through stuff, you know. Um, but 
in in one week of using it, it'll more than justify you know what they paid us for. Um, and and then maybe you know if they do some changes, we'll have to update it here and there. But it's not it's not a fifty grand you know license fee per year or whatever. Or, you know, I mean, the stuff yeah. these people do is crazy. But I some of it I might understand if it's a cloud based solution where you actually log into their server and do stuff and use their resources twenty four seven with a bot. But uh, if it's actually something locally on on uh, a user PC or whatever. I'm not seeing the reason to opt the price on the software uh, used with the bot, but yeah, I, I, there there are different scenarios because yeah. So, which, which I don't think I think you might have mentioned it on the side, but on top of everything we described about the pricing, that's just to get it started and built. But then there's the you know support, which I I think before we started recording you mentioned. There's an ongoing, hey, if you want support for this to make sure it stays working and have changes, there's additional fees on that. And you know, here's the other one, and Tank always laughs at it, is like, we're going to train a local employee. And you know, they can, you know, we'll get it set up and then they can make cheap tweaks and they can even start their own stuff. And the odds of someone being able to do that, it's so rare where you have a local person that can really do, you know, and of course they, they're going to stop doing what they were doing before because it, it really is, a, you know, can be a full-time job. But it's uh, it just doesn't happen usually, and you end up stuck with paying an outsider, which is you know. And, and back to your point about hiring a, a, a C sharp person or, or hey, an auto hockey person or whatever, yeah, right? Whatever. Someone to automate your stuff. And and again, what we said was, some of these tools offer some amazing you know AI things added on to them, uh, image detection, on where the form you know where you're scanning something, and it'll detect where the thing where the signature is, and go grab that and these forms. Yeah, yeah, Auto Hotkey doesn't have that, but there are APIs we could connect to and probably do, you know, a lot of those things. Uh, but even then, I'd say, look, for a fraction of the fee, Auto Hotkey could probably do. Let's let's even be really conservative, fifty percent of what they're doing, but at one or five percent of the fees. So you know, if maybe we can't automate everything that the other tool is doing, at least easily. But the cost for doing it is a tiny fraction of what they're paying to have the whole thing automated. Yeah, I remember years ago, and I also know Tank was probably on there, and was also one of the first people to introduce me to robotic process automation, at least with someone who has had had hands on with oh. these different companies, and. I've yet to see any of these process automation tools do something computer wise that that mm -hmm. Autohotkey couldn't do. Uh, what they do have is stuff that's built in. And if you hire your own Autohotkey person and he has to build, let's say, the right. The logging and the reporting and the online, whatever monitor and stuff like that. Sure. That costs um, an amount of time. That's for sure where you get that in those tools, but it's not because it can't be built. Right. That, that's not the thing. So whatever they're automating, whenever they're looking at an image, when they're clicking on it, when they're using Calm or using um, the accessibility library or whatever thing, thing they're actually using, our hotkey can go in and use the same thing. It's just not... Mm, boilerplate caught uh, right up the front so yeah. yeah yeah and the other one which i don't think we've we didn't mention in this video we've mentioned other ones is all those tools we mentioned automation aware blue prism ui path they're all gui based and for the most part you can't even submit code if you want to so they're all you write your program in a gui which has its pros and and to me a lot more cons than pros but it has some pros to it uh but it, uh, it it slows down your if you're a good programmer it slows down your work right your automation but it it, it can help people it's kind of like training wheels right it can help people that don't know what they're doing kind of work through stuff uh, so that's true but it, I I think you're spot on right Jackie there there is a lot of stuff already you know they have things built already that we don't have and then yeah you'd have to take you know you'd have to create them but there's a lot of other stuff like I said if you want to say well. Hey, that would be, that's the really, really complex thing. Let's just use the human for that part because it would take a lot of, for us to automate. Let's just do this other half 
where we can automate it in a, in a week, you know, and with auto hockey, where there's no licensing fees and um, save a, a buttload of cash. And maybe later, you know, we'll go another approach with hiring someone and using a, a more robust tool. Um, and I say robust because the other thing, which is one of the things that um, some guy, I, I can't remember his name, we were debating RPA, Robotics Process Nation, RPA, and Auto Hotkey versus, let's say, UiPath or whatever. And uh, they were saying their tool was so much better for RPA. And I'm like, well, with Auto Hotkey, you realize you can create your own programs as well, right? And with those tools, you're really controlling other programs. You're you're not really creating new new tools entirely. Um, so if you want a new interface, it's they're not really geared up for that kind of stuff, right? So um, it was it was an interesting call. Uh, Jean Lalonde from Quick Access Papa and I we were we were on a call together, and something he said because he's a far better programmer than I am, right? But he uses Auto Hotkey for creating new tools. He doesn't use Auto Hotkey to automate other programs, and that was where I have a lot more experience in doing it. And it just dawned on me of like you know. I always forget because I don't create GUIs, or at least not much. Um, it's such an amazing thing you can do with AutoHotKey, right? That like, hey, I don't like this interface. Well, I'm going to create my own interface, you know, and or alter the one that's there. And I don't know. Have you seen that, Jackie? Can if I'm using like, automation anywhere, can I change how the the program looks to the respondent, you know, and sh- like hide a control or disable the control? Is do you, do you have any idea? Can you do things like that? I I just don't know. I don't know if uh, automation or uh, quick access pop-up can do it, but I know that our hot key can be used for it in uh, a lot of cases. Sure enough, the the amount, the sheer amount of different GUIs that exist on the Windows platform makes it hard to say if it can always do it, but yeah, in enough. a lot of right. cases, it would be able to change the actual interface. Yeah, uh, but I was... Swap and, yeah. I was comparing, I was asking about like UiPath or automation anywhere. I don't know if they can disable a checkbox so the employees don't even see it. No, because that's not, okay. from my understanding, how those work. They are made to run on a cloud or a standalone oh. computer without interaction. Oh, right, right, right. 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 So, so yep. you find the process. I want to get this Excel yep. sheet with that data. And the automation can then go into 50 different programs and grab one information in each over the night. And when you get in at the, in the morning, that Excel sheet is ready. And let's say every evening it will check for the renamed version of that Excel sheet that a human has looked at that's been put in this specific location and then continue on with whatever. So it's not because it can't be used for a dynamic flow, but you can't use it in that point-to-point way where you actually have it as a, a follow window that follows or as an overlay or something that pops up in the bottom or that is a notification or it has an active hotkey running all the time or hot strings or all the different types of things or the shell hooks that we recently talked about. Stuff like that can be built, but into that online singly running script that isn't locally available. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I think you bring up a really good point, which I had forgotten about, is uh, there's a continuum, and I forget exactly the names of them, but the far left of it, let's say, is like desktop-assisted RPA, where you have a human doing stuff to doing the trigger often that'll trigger something and then the, you know, automates the process. Then there's the other side, which is really like AI stuff, you know, um, artificial intelligence doing, doing removing the person entirely. And that, that was a really good point, Jackie, is... That's usually the stuff that those tools are brought into is completely remove the humans entirely and do the entire process. It's not that auto hockey can't do it. It's just we'd have to write a lot of that stuff to do it. Uh, but, but it's rarely the reverse where with those tools, you're not incorporating a human to then launch the different, do the different things slightly, right? Which is what we typically do with auto hockey or, or, or alter a current program, you know, um, to have it. Yeah, remove something that's, yeah. that's where our hotkey and process automation doesn't necessarily compare to each other because so no. many of the users that we know and how they use it is on a daily basis 
at their workstation or right. through colleagues' workstations right. or whatever it is. That's probably the main use of our hotkey, where it actually speeds up the process of getting out orders or writing emails or whatever it is. Whereas many of the uh, robotic process automations I've seen is about, oh, then we have three guys that goes into different programs and grabs different information and sends it to the same person that then processes it and makes it pretty and sends that to their boss or whatever. Then it's a matter of trying to automate all of those different type tasks and in the end send the thing to the boss. So removing all of those four people's actual task, mm -hmm. whereas that's rarely how other hotkeys used. Mm -hmm. It's often a single or two, or if the person knows all of the rest of the people's tasks, it can be made, but it's not the most common way of using a hotkey. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I hope that I hope uh, everyone enjoyed that. Like I said, we don't mean to, to go off on those companies. It's it's cool that they're there, but just keep in mind when you, you start going down that path, there's big prices behind uh, signing up and using those tools. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Good night, Jackie. Yeah. Bye. Bye.